Hello, hello, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, and what an amazing couple of bullish days we've had. Amazing. Monster runs. They're ripping through. Now, these two couple of days, are they anomalies? Yes, yes, they are anomalies. We don't get these kinds of days. In fact, um, let me show you exactly what I mean when I say anomaly. So there is this guy, he's a really nice guy, his name is Ryan Dietrich. You may have heard of him. If you haven't, check him out on Twitter. He posts a lot of great uh, information. So Ryan does a lot of analysis on historical data. The way he does it is a bit different than how I do it in Price Action Harvester, the add-on uh, analytics tool for NinjaTrader. That's different than the automated system. It's the analytics tool. So the way I do it in my system is it's a lot more granular. So I'm looking for particular days and particular times, and then I'm dissecting that price to try to find the mean, the average uh, move up, how often it moved up, how often it moved down, the standard deviation of that mean, etc. He does it in a more macro sense. So look at what Ryan uh, posted uh, about six hours ago. Last time the S&P 500 gained 2%, two days in a row, coming off a 52-week low. Look at this. <laughs> November 24, 2008, and September 19, 2008, before that. So we had to go back, guys, to, to 2008. Now, 2008 wasn't a great year, was it? So, so those sure didn't work out. But Ryan's a bit of a, a has a bullish bias, so he's a he's a bull. Uh, so there's always going to be but but going back further, and we see this nailed the lows in October 1990. So he's gone back 32 years for that data, and October of 2002, just 20 years for that one, and December of 1987, even further back for this data. So. He had to really dig to find the lows uh, and, and get that sort of data out there. Bottom line, he posts standby. He's right, standby. Now, in my opinion, the third day is a pretty important day when you have two bullish runs like this, uh, sort of anomaly type of bullish runs. Why? Let me explain, and then we'll cover some of the stuff that Price Action Harvester uh, Automated V5 did. So there are some investors who... Uh, and note, I said investors, not traders. Investors, not day traders, that look for consistency over a three-day period. So if there are three green bars, they go long. If there are three short bars, they don't necessarily go long, but they consider going long. And if there are three red bars, then they consider going short. Um, so obviously, I'm mentioning the daily chart there. Uh, when I say three green bars and three red bars. So uh, the third day is going to be important, in my opinion, uh, for um, uh, a significant number of investors uh, uh, out there. That's just my view. So let's go and see what Price Action Harvester Automated Version 5 did. So today the VIX was still significantly over 25, though it was coming off of the 30-ish uh, the uh, range. But still, it is uh, moving with extreme volatility. I mean... I think I had the spooze chart open. Yeah, I have the ES chart open here. Take a look at this vol this incredible, beautiful, beautiful. Remember, day traders love volatility. And we are getting, I keep saying, in my opinion, this is a systematic day traders market. Okay. So price between 2.10 a.m. my time, Pacific Standard Time, until 3.30. I mean, an hour and 20 minutes. Look at this price move. I mean, 35 approximately to 61. Wow, this is... <laughs> You get this type of a move during regular trading hours, okay? Uh, this type of move over the extended hours, I mean, the electronic hours, the overnight hours, wow. And then, of course, look at that. It's coming right back down again. So you're having some beautiful volatility. Um, and so it is a special operations kind of day, in my opinion. Uh, the choice is yours. You have three strategies to choose from, but I have special operations, uh, in my view, is, is the one that I'm gonna go with for this demonstration. So let me go over some of the parameters I've used here. We've got Tuesday, that's today selected. We're telling the system, system, look for trades between 6.31 a.m. Pacific Standard Time until 12.29. If you were in Eastern Time, for example, you would change this to 9.31, and since it is in military time, you would change this to 15.29. And then we're telling the system to flatten everything at 12.59 my time, Pacific Standard Time, so one minute before RTH close. And then let's go over some uh, uh, parameters. So 
We are from the defensive, from the risk management side, using three different uh, methods there aside from your typical uh, profit target stop, flatten everything. But I'm using, let's just talk about the middle one first, money management. So money management is basically telling the system, if your system, if you're up uh, net during that session, 5,000 or more, then stop looking for further trades. If during that uh, session net you're down 500 or more, then stop looking for further trades. And these are two hard dollar amounts right here, but this one is not. This is, it's telling the system if it has two consecutive losing trades, then stop looking for further trades system. So that's risk management or money management. And then we have modulate break even. So in this, uh, for, for this setting here for modulate break even, you're telling the system to look for a break even if, to move it to break even if, or to deploy break even if, you're up by at least 50 ticks, 50 ticks or more, and you're, it's going to move your stop, which is this number right here, this 35 ticks, okay, to break even plus X. The X is represented by this number five here. So break even plus five ticks, okay? That's what it's telling the system to do. And then finally, we have move stop. So move stop, that's been enabled. It's telling the system system right from the time of entry, calculated, I calculate everything at the, at the minute, Every 60 seconds, everything gets calculated again on my system. And uh, so starting from bar zero, so right from the entry, if the, you're up by at least 90 ticks, so you have unrealized profit of at least 90 ticks at the close of the bar, and if price moves against you, because check adverse price is checked, so if price moves against you, then move the stop from the stop price to the current bid price if you're in a long trade, or if you're in a short trade, then move it to the current ask price. So the stop gets moved to the current ask price if you're in a short trade. So let's go and run it. Let's make sure we have the two ticks of slippage, yes. And we are running Tuesday, we are running 631, 1229. We are, these two aren't checked. If anybody's gonna get confused, let's go and do that. Uh, but it, you could put anything you want here. If these aren't checked, it's checked, it's not gonna run. Um, so, but let's go ahead and run it and see what happened today. So we're only taking in 35 ticks, guys. I spent a lot of time explaining that because I wanted to make sure that people understood that. I've seen videos on YouTube where people talk about for NQ putting 100 ticks, et cetera. Um, and so that's up to you what you decide uh, to have your stop uh, to be. But uh, in my opinion, this is a low number, but you know what? Um, there is a, a different methodology that I am going to be demonstrating here. So. That is why it's low. Um, you can put it high, we'll run it high as well. So as far as the system, what did it do? So here's that trade, 11.523.50, that entered the trade at 6.32 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and look at that. It moved the stop, that's why you see stop loss here, though the trade is profitable, because it moved the stop to the current bid price here and it essentially exited. Why did it do that? Because there was in this move here, at least 90 ticks. So we had more than 90 ticks in unrealized profit and price moved against us. Okay, we don't know if that's gonna go there all the way down. So price moved against us and it booked the profit. The next trade, so this is a move stop uh, booking of the profit. The next trade is actually demonstrating your modulate break even. Why? Because look what happened here. So it entered here you had more than 50 ticks here in profit. That's what we assigned for the system. So what we, what the system did is it moved the stop to break even, which is your entry plus five ticks. There you have it. Okay, so that's a tiny little win there. All right, but it's a win. So the next trade is a loss. Look how, look at that little tiny move. That's your 35 ticks. Okay, look at that move versus this move. So that's your 35 ticks and it took a loss right there. That entered long. And then the next one, that's loss number one. And the next one's also a loss right off the bat. Again, 35 ticks. And we have now two consecutive losses. What does that mean? This one has been enabled. The system has stopped looking for trades. You are done with this strategy for the day. You can certainly re-enable it. You can do something else with the strategy. But for the purposes of what you've deployed here, you're done for the day because you had two consecutive losses. So let's see what the system did. That's what you've got. You've got 1,195 in total net profit. We have certainly accounted for slippage. It's right there. You had a max drawdown of 370. Essentially, the, the winners were your long trades. You had two wins, one loss, and then you had one short trade, which was a loss. So it was 185. Why is it 185? Was it, 
Remember, I spent some time explaining the 175. Why is it 185? This is to those who have been using back tests and slippage in NinjaTrader, you know what I'm talking about. So forgive me for wasting your time right now, but I want to explain it to those who may not know. We added two ticks of slippage. Each tick is is um, five dollars. So you add two times, you multiply two times five, ten dollars. You add it to the stop. It's 185 now. 175 plus 10, 185. All right, let's do some further testing. What if we were to change some of the parameters as far as the uh, uh, move stop? For example, if instead of confirming that price has moved against us first before we attempt to book the profit, what if we remove that and instead made it time-based? What does that mean? Instead of making it so that I'm relying on adverse price, that means for price to move against my trade, then let's add some time here. What if we were to say, let's wait three minutes from the entry bar or three bars from the entry bar and each bar is a minute because we're trading the one minute chart and uh, just to make the numbers precisely one to three uh, i'm going to reduce this to 30. so now the rr ratio is 130 on this move stop and so let's go and run it like this let's see what it's going to do so it was 1995 with check adverse price and this was zero at starting bar. Let's go and run it at now. And uh, we had four trades. Now we have six trades. So we took on two more trades, but it's actually a lesser net profit. So let's go ahead and see what happened. So it looks like all of the activity happened pretty quickly and it stopped looking for trades at 70, what, what is that, six? 706, okay. So first trade, is still 632 that's a move stop it broke the profit because it met the move stop parameters here where it's more than three bars one two it's three bars or more i should say one two three booked it okay and it's over 90 ticks so i booked it this trade right here that's a break even you can tell anytime that green bar is like very flat okay uh, i don't say green bar the green dotted line excuse me right here where those that run right there is sort of flat. When it is flat, then what that means is break even has, uh, has gone off, okay? It's still gonna show stop loss because that is what we moved the stop loss, but it, it is, uh, you can tell just by how flat that dotted line is, okay? So in case somebody's gonna ask, well, why is there a three, dick, three tick difference when you denoted five? Hmm, Rafi? Well, the reason for that is you have two ticks of slippage. So the way NinjaTrader will calculate that is it'll take your five ticks, it'll subtract it by your slippage, and it'll plot it for you right there on the chart. And there you have it. So it's three ticks difference between this number and that number. Okay? So that is accurate. Next one is a move stop. That one's a move stop. It's booking, booking the unrealized profit. These two are your losses. Again, we have 30 ticks, guys. In my opinion, that's not a lot for NQ, but for the purposes of special operations, um, I think that is not a bad number. 30, 35, 40, 60, somewhere around that range, but I'm not recommending you decide. You run your back tests. You're the trader. This is a self-directed system. You have to run back tests, and more importantly, be very comfortable with the amount of risk that you're taking per trade. Okay, that's the key here. If you're comfortable, the level of anxiety is lower, you're a happier human being. The more uh, anxiety you add to your life, the worse it is for you, okay? Uh, so uh, you don't wanna do that to yourself. Uh, that's just my opinion, just uh, saying how I feel. Uh, but at this point, that's what we have. We have six trades and it looks like it had 1375 net profit by using by making a slight change in how we do things okay as all i did was change this from a zero to three that's the starting bar so it makes the system wait at least three minutes and we still required 90 ticks of uh, unrealized profit before we move the stop but what i also did is just to make the numbers exactly one to three okay some ocd stuff right there um, it's, I said, okay, I want to reduce it so that it perfectly matches that 90 there. And so I reduced the stop from 35 to 30 ticks. And so I was taking in essence, $150 worth of risk for each trade in the system. Okay. And, um, so essentially I'm, I'm down 320. So Rafi, why is 150 plus 150, 320 in your system? It's not me guys. It's not me. We have slippage. 
okay? We, we have to incorporate slippage. It, it starts to make sense, okay? It starts to make sense. Hope this has been helpful, guys. If you have questions or you would like to see a detailed breakdown of all three strategies, strategy one, strategy two, and strategy three, uh, and ask me any questions you have, you wanna kick the tires, you wanna try to break the system, all of that is fine and dandy. Request a Zoom demo. Well, I will demo this for you and you can determine for yourself if this is going to be a good fit for your trading style. Until we meet, take care and God bless.